Hi, and welcome to the Home Assistant How-To with Beardy Tinker. Today will be a bit different episode. We will be integrating CCS811 CO2 sensor. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we begin today's episode, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my channel. Thank you, your support really means a lot. Let's get cracking with the Home Assistant how-to. Today we will be integrating CCS811 CO2, or also known as carbon dioxide, and volatile organic compound sensor. This sensor is sold as a module for Arduino projects, and you can find it almost anywhere online. I'll be posting a link to the place where I bought mine. This is a very small sensor. It has a couple of pins and by integrating it with the ESP Home, you will get two sensors created. One will be CCS811 eCO2 value, E meaning it's estimated CO2 value. So this one is not calibrated, not professional sensor and you have to take caution when using this and not just rely on that sensor alone. The other one is total volatile organic compound. This sensor will give you information about some of the compounds that can be found in the air in the closed space. What are those compounds or fumes or gases or whatever you can call it? If you are using acetone, if you are using paints or nail polish or things like that, those all substances evaporate, meaning that they have really low boiling points when they turn from the solid or liquid to gas and they fill your breathing space. So those elements are toxic, uh, some can be cancerogenic, and this is why you really want to track those compounds in the air you breathe. As I said, those are not professional sensors, but they can give you some rough estimated numbers. I think they are measured in particles per million or parts per million. Okay, so the first step before we create sensor in the ESP Home and uh, Home Assistant is of course to combine everything together. For this project you will be needing CCS811 sensor. I'm using a little bit different one. And the next thing that you will need is also some Arduino board. I'm using for this project uh, Wemos D1 Mini. This is ESP8266 board. Let's start combining everything together. Okay, so let's look what we need for this ESP home sensor. We of course need CCS811. This is the one I have. Most of the people, normal people, solder the pins on the underside. I like to solder them on the upper side, so when I connect the uh, DuPont cables, I know exactly where I have connected them. We'll also be using um, ESP8266, so-called Wemos D1 Mini. We'll need three cables, DuPont cables, female to female, for standard connection. But we will also need one that will allow us to connect ground to two other pins. So this is the one I hacked. I have here, I have five wires, but I'll only be using three. You can make your own, you just have to have two DuPont cables and then you, you just tie them up together. Okay, let's look how we need to connect this one. So first thing, let's look at the uh, voltage and also the clock and data pins. If we are using and we are using I2C, we need two pins here. This is D1. Let me zoom in. So as I said, we need pins D1 and D2. Those two pins are clock and data pins. Let me put orange on D1 and yellow on D2. So not first, second, but third and fourth pin. And we also need one for one DuPont cable for 3 volts. And if you look closely, 3 volts is 
three volts is the first pin on this side so let's take a green cable and connect it here to three volts let's also now connect all those pins to the uh, sensor so we said that the orange is D1 and D1 is clock so we have to put orange on SCL so this is clock yellow is on D2 we have to connect it on the SDA or data pin okay and green is as we said 3.3 volts or 3.3 volts we have to connect that that one to VCC okay now let's take this harness that we've prepared now we have to connect ground uh, from the ESP board to ground on the sensor board let's look here on the bottom we have 5 volts this is the one here next to it is G this is ground so let's connect one wire to the ground and now let's connect also ground on our sensor board it should be one next to VCC so this is the second pin on the board if you google the internet it will be pretty hard to find this one because most other videos or tutorials tell you to connect a WA key or wake up uh, to the D3 pin and it didn't work for me so what I found out is that you should connect wake also to the ground so you have ground connected ground from the ESP board connect it to the uh, both ground on the sensor board but also to wake or WAK pin here and it should look something like this everything messed up so now that we have connected everything we have to program ESP board and there are a couple of things that you should note and I'll go through them when we go to the code on the internet you will find a bunch of videos and bunch of information on how you can do it through the uh, Arduino but since we are here working on the home assistant sensors we'll be using ESP home so you need to have a USB cable you have to connect one side of the cable to the ESP board and the other one goes to your computer Now let's jump to the computer. Now that we have combined everything together and it's working, don't forget you have to connect it to your PC. Next thing is to go to ESP Home. If you do not have ESP Home installed inside your Home Assistant, it's very easy to do. If you are using supervised version, just press on Supervisor, Add-on Store, Repositories, and you have to add this repository URL can be found in the description of the video let's close it after you add repository you can just press on it and select install after it installs you can tick the box next to show in sidebar so it will be visible all the time on the left side on the other hand if you are using home assistant core I will be posting here a link on how you can install ESP as a docker container now that ESP Home is installed, we'll create a new sensor or new template or new configuration here in ESP. Plus, let's give it a name. Name has to be in lowercase letters or numbers only with no space or symbols in between. You can use underscore only. Continue. Let's select device. I will be using Wemos D1 Mini. Continue. Type in your Wi Fi SSID. Type in your Wi Fi password. And here you can also type in the access password. This is used for over the air updates. 
so you better set it up, it will be easier for you in future to update this board. And let's press submit. Now we have new board configured. Let's edit the configuration. Here you can see basic in configuration, but we'll change this a little bit since I want to uh, customize it and of course add the sensor itself. One of the things I want to do always is add the not dynamic but static IP address. So let me remove everything from here and paste with the template I have prepared earlier. Okay, we will change this to SCC. S811. You can see here that now I've set uh, IP address here. Now let me just change it to 55. I already have set or defined gateway and subnet. Captive portal is on, logger is on. This is API password and the over the air password. So next step is to configure I square C or I2C. We need this because our module is using I2C to communicate with the Arduino. It's very easy, you just add I2C. And now we have to define where our clock and data pins on the board are. So SCL, this is a clock pin. For us, we know that this is D1. And SDA, as data pin, we have it on D2. If you remember from the image, this is how we connected our module with the Arduino. Next thing that is optional, but I almost always type here is scan true. This just forces our I2C or I2C to scan for other devices or all devices connected to it. And now we have to configure sensor. Sensor. platform and the name of the platform is you guessed it CCS811 next thing that we have to define here is ECO2 and TVOC ECO2 name will be CCS811 E B oh sorry uh, C O two value. This is the default name you have also inside the ESP home component information. You can make it anything. You can shorten it and just leave it. For example, E C O two. And next sensor is T V O C. Uh, let's give it a name. Once again, I will be using the same default name we have from the ESP Home uh, example. CCS811 total volatile organic compound. Okay. We have now defined two mandatory sensors. Now we can add additional fields that are not mandatory, but can help you, especially in the future. First one is address. Here you can hard code the address. Depending on the type of the sensor, type of the board, default value for this is 0x5a. If you check the component information or the web page in regard to the sensor, you can see that you also can use the address 0x5b, but it will not work with how we set up the sensor earlier. And the next thing that we will define here is update interval. Update interval defines how often will the sensor look for the update values from the sensor. Default value in the example is 60 seconds, but we will be typing here 15 seconds. The last value that we will define here is baseline. So what baseline is? Each time you plug in the sensor, sensor recalibrates itself. 
but this also means that when it reboots it will also recalibrate itself based on the air quality that is currently in the space it is monitoring so if you for example have higher co2 value or higher uh, voc or volatile organic uh, compound level inside your apartment or house it will calibrate itself and using this as a baseline meaning that you can really be poisoning yourself but your sensor will tell you that the air quality is okay the most precise way would be to have some kind of uh, calibrated environment where you know exactly what the values are but since we cannot use it especially not with this chip sensor the best way is to start it in a well aired place so you just put it outside of your window of course if the air outside is not poisonous it will then calibrate itself and when you place it in a closed confined space for example your kitchen or living room or bedroom it will be using clear fresh outside air as a baseline and based on that you can do some kind of automations and things like that but since the sensor itself is recalibrating itself let's say it all the time what you can also do is you can leave the sensor running for 20 minutes outside Note in the log file what is the current baseline. You will receive something like baseline 0xA483, for example, like an example of the ESP homepage. And then you just type here this baseline, meaning that the next time the sensor starts itself, it will not be recalibrating itself because now it knows what the baseline is. I will type here the information from the web page from the esp home web page but i will also comment out this so let's say it's 0x a483 and as i said i will comment this out in my home just as information my baseline is 0x0478 okay now we have prepared everything here we can connect it to the wi-fi uh, we will give it the IP address, we know what the captive portal is, and now we have to save this and upload it to our ESP8266. Let's press save, let's close this. Yes, because first time, before we upload the firmware for the first time, we have to go to three dots, press compile, and we have to wait until all the components have been downloaded and compiled for these boards. Compiling it first time usually takes a bit longer than any other time after that, because as I said, a couple of components had to be installed here. One is the ESP Sync, the other one is ESP Sync Async Web Server, Async TCP ESP Home. So those three components had to be downloaded. Uh, installed and compiled in a new firmware. Okay, the firmware compiled successfully. Now let's press download. If this is your first time compiling anything and you never use the USB cable to connect your PC with the Arduino, you have to also download drivers for your board. I will be not posting the link because there are various links on the internet. You just have to find drivers for specific chipset you're using. I think they are called CH340 and uh, CP2102 or something like that. But there is plenty of information down on the internet. If you have never ever so far used this application, you also need ESP Flasher. ESB Flasher can be found on a GitHub page from ESP Home. You just click on Releases and there you will see the latest versions for your operating system, macOS, Windows 64 or Windows 86 version. Download whatever version suits your operating system or environment. You should now see two files downloaded. One will be ESP Home Flasher 
and the other one is cc811.bin. This is the bin file we compiled previously. You can now start Flasher. If you receive any kind of warning, just press run anyway. Now we have Flasher running. Let's press this to reload serial device list. And in the drop down list, you should see COM port. It can be COM 3, 4, 8, 10, what, wherever your computer has found this USB cable connected to. Let's select firmware. This will be CCS811.bin for me. And let's press flash. This is now done. We see here the log file. And we see that we have connected and more or less everything looks okay. Scanning I2C bus found one device and this is the device we are using. Let's keep this program running and let's now go back to Home Assistant. In Home Assistant we can now see that the board is up. We can also press here show log to see the log files. The content of the log file should be more or less the same as it was in the uh, flasher. We can stop it. And now we can add this board through integrations. Let's press on configuration, integrations. And we now see here ESP Home as discovered. Let's press configure. Submit. We have to type in the correct IP address. This is not correct IP address because we specified one by hand. So let's change this. 55. Submit. And if you remember, we also configured over the air or API password. So it's time to input this password here. And submit. You can select the area. And let's finish. Now we have three sensors in my case, or we have CCS811 configured. Let's press on it. Let's see what the two entities are. And you can see here that we have CO2 and the VOC or volatile organic compound sensor. Let's go to overview. Let's go to fun stuff. And let's add here our new sensor. CCS volatile CCS. Okay, we will remove this and we will name this CCS811. Save. You have to note that sensor requires 20 minutes approximately to calibrate. So you can get various different outputs from the sensor in that time. At one point, you will start to receive, let's call it, let's say it like that, uh, stable numbers, meaning that more or less they will be stable each and every time they are received by Home Assistant. Let's go back to ESP Home. Let's look at log files. Let's wait a bit for the data here. And after some time, as I said, those numbers will become stable. The baseline will fluctuate a bit, uh, first five or 10 minutes. And after 20 minutes, you will see that this baseline number more or less is not changing anymore. So what you can do is you can copy it, stop, edit, uncomment this baseline, what we previously inserted, and replace it with whatever, uh, whatever number you got from your system. I will replace it with the number that I got previously when I was setting up or testing this. As I said, for me, this was 0478. 0478. Save, upload. And now we will be using over the air updates, meaning that we do not have to have computer connected with the ESP uh, device. We can connect it to the battery and we will be using Wi-Fi connection to upload the new firmware. Also, you can notice that compiling now is a lot faster. It's already done and it's already uploading further to the ESP board.
it's normal for the first time you receive this yellow warning because the board itself is rebooting and it takes a bit for it to connect to the Wi-Fi and to signal back to Home Assistant or ESP Home. So everything looks okay, great. We have set our baseline here, as you can see. And if we leave sensor in a piece for 10-20 10, 10, minutes, we will be starting to receive some normal values. How you can test the sensor? One of the ways is to blow the air directly in, into it because your breath contains a lot of CO2. Okay, so at this point we have created sensor, we have programmed the sensor and we have integrated it both ESP Home and our Home Assistant. Next thing for you is, of course, you can create automations. What automations could you use? As far as I've read, or if I'm not mistaken, the baseline value for CO2 sensor is 400, meaning that you can create automations in such a way that you get notified if value of the air quality or value for the CO2 increases over, let's say, 800 particles or parts per million. CCS 8211. Numeric state, yes, CCS above, let's say, 800 for, I don't know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, minutes. This will be a trigger, and then you can define, of course, some kind of alert, let's call service, message, Warning, CO2 levels too high, let's save it. So the next time the value of the estimated CO2 goes above 800 or 800 ppm, for a period longer than 5 minutes, you will get notification that CO2 levels are too high. If you have air conditioning or ventilation at home, you can trigger ventilation. If you have automatic window opening, you can, for example, trigger windows to open or whatever you have, you can trigger it based on that value. But this is it for today's Home Assistant How-To with Beardy Thinker. I hope you enjoyed this video. It took me a bit longer to record it since I had to test since integrating the component really didn't work from the first try or second or 105th time. So I had to dig a lot to get I I2C working with this board. If you did enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really means a lot. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord server or you can leave the comment down in the comment section. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates and I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.